Today I want to show you guys how to knit this really sweet little daisy stitch. Um, I, it's probably got other names as with many things in knitting, but I first saw this stitch in um, like a 1980 something edition of the Reader's Digest Complete Guide to Needlework. That was my mom's. Um, I saw it when I was a kid. Um, and they call it the daisy stitch and I've seen it elsewhere like that online. So that's what I'm going to call it. Um, so for this stitch I've cast on, uh, you need 10, uh, you need 10 stitches plus eight if you're working this flat. Um, if you're working it staggered in the round, like this hat that I've knit with the daisy stitch, um, you just need a multiple of 10 for the staggering and it being in the round to work. So just FYI on that. Um, and then for the swatch, um, I cast on 14 stitches so that I could have two stitches of garter to help the swatch lay flat for the purposes of demonstration. So this is the right-handed tutorial, and here's how to do uh, the daisy stitch. Um, I always used a crochet hook for this, even though that 1980s Reader's Digest book didn't, um, and you'll see why in just a minute. I just think it's a lot more efficient to do it with the crochet hook. So. Um, you'll start by working, well in my case, the two garter stitches on the edge. And then when you get to your motif stitches, you'll knit three. So one, two, three. And then grab your crochet hook and insert it two stitches, uh, so under, in, ugh, insert it in the second stitch of the left needle three rows down, so one, two, three, and poke it right through that third loop below the second stitch, and bring your work, draw, your, draw your working yarn through using that crochet hook. Um, in the Reader's Digest instructions, they just say to use the needle, but I kept dropping stuff when I was teaching myself to do this, so I was like, yeah, let's just get a crochet hook and be done with it. And then I always put that loop I draw through on the left needle so that I can transfer it to the right needle making sure that it's laying the same way as the other loops. Because in the next row when we um, make these loops lay flat, if there's a twist, um, which in this middle loop on this bottom one there was, you can notice it. If you're not as nitpicky as me, you don't have to worry about how it lays, but that's just how I work this stitch. All right, so we've pulled that one loop through, then we're gonna knit two. One, two, and then grab our crochet hook a second time poking it through that same hole that we did the first time. And just like before, bring the yarn through, put it on the left needle, and then bring it to the right so it's laying parallel with the other stitches. And then knit two. And then you probably guessed it, grab your crochet hook a final time and draw the yarn through again. And one thing to be careful of when you do this is making sure not to draw your loop through too tightly. Because um, if you do it too tight, you might cause your work to curl up on itself. So just make sure those loops are not too tight. And then if you're nitpicky like me, make sure they're laying the same way as the other stitches. Then you can finish your row. And now if you're very clever, you will have noticed that instead of the 14 stitches I had cast on at the beginning, I now have 17. Oh, and this is a little tight. So yeah, I now have 17 loops, and I only want 14, otherwise my work's gonna start growing. So on the other side, which if you're working flat like me, will be the purl side, the wrong side. If you're working in the round, like on a hat, you'll be knitting everything that I'm purling. Okay, and so what we need to do in the next row is work those loops we added together with a stitch next to them to get us back to the number of stitches we cast on originally. So we'll knit those two garter stitches, purl three, and then we've come to that first loop in our motif. So we will purl it together, purl two together, with the stitch next to it, and purl one. Then we've come to the second loop in our motif, purl two, purl two together, purl one, 
and then we've got that third loop left and we will purl two together and then finish working the row. And with that, we have knit one right-handed daisy motif. And it's now laying flat like it should be. And right here you can see I did twist that one and it's gonna drive me nuts. But since this is a swatch, I'll chill, I'll leave it. Um, but that's how you do that. And you'll notice that when you work rows of stockinette between each daisy, they lay nice and flat like in my little hat. So that's how you work the daisy stitch.